DRG is just always he's got too many speedlings he he's running circles around uh, creator in these games so creator needs to make sure he can lock down and stay calm and confident here yeah daybreak is now the third map and uh, DRG has to win another one if he wants to advance to uh, the round of eight and creator has to win three games in a row now if he wants to change what happened so far He's looking at an 0-2, he needs a win and he needs it desperately. The map is Daybreak for him and uh, is he gonna change things up with a standard play against Dong Ragu? It looks like really well overwhelming for the Zerg player but Kreda fought so well on the last map. It was a bit heartbreaking to see him go down but still Dong Ragu pushed through, won the game and now what is Kreda gonna do? We have him once more with the pile on the low ground, indicates that he is going into a forge play for DRG. Nothing uh, so far, just waiting for his uh, pool to be started. Yeah. And a slight difference, Crater not scouting Yeah, you know, if you look at the main map, you can see where he's gone. He went down with his probe of the ramp and then changed his mind and went back. So he considered scouting and then turned around and said, no, I'm not going to scout. I want to have my next stuff a little bit faster. That's really interesting, especially considering he's down two games. That's a pretty big risk. Someone like DRG might just six pull you, yeah. and then you you just lose. That's always the risk that you run, especially when you're down two games, as you said. The opponent might think, well, I'm already so far ahead, I can roll a dice now. I can just go for either a really, really greedy opening, or I just go and uh, start with the early aggression. If I lose a game, that's still okay. But if my opponent is not prepared for that, then I take the game and the whole entire series. So now we have the Nexus first for Creator. And DRG with his normal pool opening. Worked well the last two games. Why change it up? No. He's going for the same build. And I don't know, on this map, I'm not quite sure what we're going to see from Creator. But what he did so far was start with the Stargate two times. I could actually see him go for Roboplay this time chain things, uh, things up a little bit. It's still a good map where you can uh, start with the Stargate opening, but it didn't work for Creator now twice. Maybe a different approach would be the better choice. I think that's what we're gonna see. I think we will see robotics on this map. That's what, that's what I would expect, because... And not robotics with the timing push, but robotics into a third. Because Creator has shown that... I mean, in the last game, we had a weird situation occur where he got caught with his pants down, but he had that aggressive attack coming out. I think now he wants to show something different. Not only different in that he wants to expand and, and actually keep that third base for real, but different in that it's going to be a totally different tech altogether. The Overlord now scouting the main base and see the two assimilators that are just being dropped. The gateway is not done yet, so no cybernetic squares of now, but already the third base built for Ch uh, Doran Ragu, while the probe is now heading in, trying to confirm as much as possible, and is most likely also going to survive this entire ordeal, with the 14 hit points so far, should be able to just sneak back home. It's going to be close. Okay, with the, yeah, with the shields now just being built, it's not going to be a problem at all. The probe is definitely going to survive this. Yeah. Probe. Like, oh, huh? I'm never going to get those hit points back. Stop scratching me. Yeah, that's that's going to be fine. But that scratch will never come out. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like when you, you drop your phone or something and you don't recognize you have a scratch and then you think it's one of those smudges on your phone that looks like a scratch and you start to wipe it away and you realize it's really a scratch and you're like ah. yeah you know that feeling you're like yeah you just look at it and you go ah. well right now my phone is i'm so angry with my phone that i just want to destroy it but i have to wait for my new phone that i'm going to pick up in germany hopefully yeah that's that's i gotta be a really exciting thing i dropped my phone the other day in the ice and I, like it slid down an entire hill Oh like, no! On the ice, oh, and I, I, I was, and it came and smacked the concrete curb on the bottom of the hill, and I was like, "Well, that probably doesn't even work anymore." I picked it up, and luckily it landed on the backside, so the screen is totally fine. But the backside of it has all sorts of interesting scratches now. Yeah, yeah, okay. And when I hold it, I can feel the scratch on the, like it's a really big. <laughs> I was actually hoping it, secretly while it was sliding down the hill that it would break so I could get a new phone. But I'm just gonna wait. You know what we have? We have a Robotech this time yeah. for Creator. No plus one though. Exactly. Creator hasn't started his plus one yet. And I mean, usually you would 
start it at least when the robo is done, but this could actually just be creator go for War maybe Prism. War Prism. No, Immortal first. It's gonna be, uh, yeah, only has two additional gateways being built. And without the plus one upgrade earlier, you don't go for the War Prism. If you would go for War Prism, I feel we would have seen the plus one before the, yes. uh, the robo, but this looks like he's going into an Immortal push. He could do it, man. He's got a lot of Chrono Energy saved up, so with the lack of probe production as well. It starts to look more and more that way. Now he starts probes again. He's doing the secondary wall on the main, which nobody ever does unless they're going for this push. The thing is he's still on 40 harvester, so going into additional probes here is not a problem. Yeah. But the plus one attack upgrade is just gonna finish. He has now the extra gates all uh, up, gets more of them. The second immortal is already being Chrono boosted. This is definitely gonna be an immortal push by him. On a map, where we've seen Immortal pushes in the past, but a lot of Protoss players have decided to not do it here anymore. Because it's... You can get trapped in the middle of the map. And run buys or attempts and flanks are really good here. So right now, DRG has to deal with an Immortal push and is going for plus one attack. A little bit of a delayed lair attack. Did not build too many drones. He's not gonna go into 64 as is usually the users here. No, he's going into 58. He's continuing his Ling Heavy uh, oh. play and oh wow, it's great for Creator. Those forces were perfect. Yeah, the force fields were great. The problem is that he was, that Creator was spotted. So the force fields were really good. The supply block is not good, not at all, because right now he's already missing warp -ins. Yep. He's uh, got warp -ins available. He's not hitting right now. His warp gates are finishing too. And now he can warp in. The lanes are slowing him down a little bit though, of course. And... Don't worry, Goo is just continuing the aggression. He's not gonna stop. Uh-oh, losing these sentries is not good. Creator, if he loses this game, it's all over. He's losing so much. And yeah. I think maybe Nerf is starting to get to him a little bit here in this game. Here comes the big fight with those Immortals. We have nice force fields at the ramp shutting those links out. This and those scary for Dear Roaches too. are gonna die. He needs to get one Immortal at least. He tries, but he does not. This is scary for DRG because now he's lost a ton of units he needs to defend. Yeah. DRG just lost a lot here. And he didn't kill a single Immortal with that. Resources lost are in favor of Creator already. The thing is that Creator still has most of his sentries. He has six sentries left. He has three mortals, so the single one died, and now he's moving out. And the big problem here is that DRG doesn't have any tech, Nothing. so he relies on Zerklings and Roaches. Another nice trap. Yeah, but this trap will slow him down slightly. Trap for two Roaches. We don't it's have okay. speed. Yeah. yeah, we don't have speed for the Roaches. No Roach speed, and he doesn't have any spine crawlers at his third base. His bases aren't even fully connected yet. Plus one attack is done. Uh, plus one, uh, sorry, what was that for the Zerg player armor, right? Now attack for the range units, here we go. Yep. Okay, so now he's moving on to creep, and he has with this push an observer, so he can kill the creep tumors. Here come the Zerglings, very late force fields. Really wants to delay them as long as possible, another round of warp ins. Doesn't have the forward pylon, so he has to use the warp prism to warp in and not to pick up. Good force fields. This is really well and done, the, the Mike Shop creator is awesome. The Link is coming on the side of the Zealots, so he's he's just fighting the wrong composition, but he doesn't have a choice. Like you said, he does no tech. He has to defend with Roaches and Lings. Now he's trying to make more Roaches because he realizes the comp composition is a little bit Zealot heavy, but that's when he's just going to switch into force making yeah. more Stalkers, and he still has all of the Immortals there. This is brilliant positioning by creator. This is awesome. He moves exactly in the Camps perfect the spot. Larva camps everything here. We have him with a nice ratio of units. Yes, yeah, this is... G -G. DRG doesn't even try anymore. Yeah. GG. Well played by Creator. Such a great positioning for him.